Ladies and gentlemen, this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Awesome, as described by the legislature. Well, they haven't voted yet, but that's the name that we put in. Uh, we're happy to have Esther behind the board, making sure that we're on tonight with the audio perfect and the video perfect. Tom it was not here tonight. David looks 10 years younger. Thank you, Esther. Yeah. Uh, we're going to start tonight with uh, Fire Chief. He wants to talk about a free schedule. We got a water district folks coming in in an open discussion about the disposition of the old fire station. They currently lease it from us. And well, what do we want to do with that? Maybe there's an active discussion there. A couple of updates. We're going to finish. Uh, we had a liquor license for some folks who want to run around corn in the dark with beer. We'll talk about that. And uh, we're going to finish tonight in executive session for a single purpose. And that is to approve uh, minutes of prior executive sessions because this is actually one of Sherry's last meetings with us. And as a town administrator leaves, we got to get those minutes cleaned up. So that's our agenda for tonight. I want to thank everybody for watching. And remember, this isn't fake. So Steve, you want to talk to us about proposed fee schedules. And is this going to turn the fire department into a revenue source? Someone's going to ask us. Of course they will. And that was, that was the question that came up uh, back in 2017. Correct when I instituted the fee schedule. Right. And, um, first off, thanks for the time and letting me come You're in. You're welcome. And what I've got before you this evening is essentially an update to the established fee schedule. Uh, if you compare our fees against neighboring towns, we'll find that Sunderland's fees are quite a bit lower mm -hmm. than the other towns. And the reason that is, is because, oh, probably four years ago, I started digging into it when I took over, and I determined we didn't have a fee schedule. Right. And yes, I remember that meeting. It was, nope. yeah. Go ahead. And there, there, there was there was nothing there, um, and I suppose that was okay. The the town and the fire department was in a position prior to me mm -hmm. to make that work, and unfortunately, it doesn't work now because what we're finding is even though we've got the um, the inspector, the fire prevention position that has been around for a while. There really wasn't much of a uh, much of a way to formalize what folks would expect to pay for those services, and um, I typically take time out of work to do the inspections that I'm responsible for. The other folks that are in the same boat do the same thing. So it's important to at least compensate people a little bit for their time, their expertise, and the liability to say that this is okay compared to the law and the code. So what I did is I added a little bit to different fees that were already established, and then I added a few new fees. And what is highlighted on the proposed listing is what has changed. So I can go down that pretty quickly and just describe it. The first change, uh, new sprinkler system, install permit, plan review, and I added an inspection because We've recently come into a situation where, uh, with a development, there is a an outside consultant that did the confirm that the engineering is appropriate and is doing the lion's share of the inspections, but they're not able to accept the system on behalf of the town's fire department. Right. right. Yeah. So somebody from the fire department still has to go out and look at it, make sure the number of sprinkler heads is appropriate, do the right sprinkler heads, and so forth. Plus, review all the plans ahead of time. So that was an administrative ad, and I also added in per building mm -hmm. because previously it was a little ambiguous. And gotcha. uh, looking at the amount of time it takes to walk around different facilities, oh, different building. sites, yep. uh, and still $100, um, that fee went up from a flat rate of 50, yep. but it's still well within what neighboring towns are charging for that one. Um, the reinspection fee equal to the initial fee, uh, quite frankly, because by the time they have us come in, all the piping is there, it should be good. And if it's not, then they're going to have to have a pretty thorough reinspection. Right. The, um, the next one that I had added in uh, private fire hydrant NFPA test oversight for NFPA 24. Um, that is a pretty involved test time wise. Depending on the number of fire hydrants, it can take a couple of hours. It may not take much time at all. 
but there are still inspections that should take place while the ground is open. And um, afterwards, there's typically some involvement with the fire department to go and have everybody see where the new fire hydrants are. If I, if I could, Chief, is that private fire hydrant uh, an FPA test an install test or a performance test? It's actually both. Both, okay. Because what's involved is with the NFPA 24, there is a requirement that the fire hydrants be flushed. Yep. Yeah. And that flushing requirement is much more uh, rigorous, you might say, than what the mass water um, water supply. Sure, for municipal water, that's a functionally different animal. You want to make sure rates and pressures, etc., for suppression. Yep. Precisely. And then what will happen is the engineer that is conducting that, that flushing test will put a device on there that will measure flow. Got it. Pressure. And that engineer also previously has to give us plans, specifications, yep. calculations. Got it. So it's not um, maybe as involved as going around inside of a building, but there's still quite a bit there. Right, right. And also... Um, Everybody tries to be very careful when they're installing water lines and hydrants. Mm -hmm. However, as evidenced by some that we've done recently, no matter how careful people are, there's always going to be some rocks that get in there. Yep. And you can hear it come out. Yep. And I'd much rather hear it come out of the hydrant than hear it go sure. into the pump of a fire truck. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to stress the importance of local, uh, a, a regional impact of a low flow could be uh, cited in uh, Fairfield Avenue in Holyoke two weeks ago, where in a, in, a, in a large municipal setting, no flow in existing hydrants. That's just, not a just good thing. Co cost. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, inspections are important. They are. And as well as performance tests annually. But anyway. Absolutely. And there's also, a, um, you know, there's also a requirement for NFPA 24 that private water supplies be tested. Right. And that's something that as, as we start to get a little bit more established with our, our fees and what we're required to do, some of the folks that have private water supplies mm -hmm. are going to find themselves getting a, a letter saying that we'd like to see what your water supplies sure. can do. And there are still a couple of private hydrants here in town. Mm -hmm. So not to split hairs, Chief, but you know we have a water district which is a quasi private municipal entity right. what what impact if any i know the relationship has been solid over the years I, i'm not there's nothing wrong with what the district actually does or has engineered however you use the term private and there's probably a couple that we could talk about on private property but they're supplied by the district is the district constitute a private supply no. Okay. No. That's that mirrors language in the law. Yep. And the code. Yep. So I didn't want to deviate from that too much. Yep. yep. But the water district, they're outstanding supporters of us. Completely agree. Yeah. And they provide us a lot of water. Yep. And as I tell everybody on the department, it's their water. They let us use it. Right. And what specifically this gets after is the hydrants that they're not responsible for. Got it. And the hydrants that they wouldn't touch. We had this conversation with them recently. Um, where they said, well, we're not going to go and, and flush that hydrant or test that hydrant because if we break it, we bought it. Right, right. And it's the same thing mm -hmm. with sure. the fire department. So that is why this law was put on the books. So the owner hires an engineer to come, or a contractor to come out, open it, and then provide documentation back to the fire department that that was done. So analogous, one of our, one of our in, my, in my private life, one of my uh, largest customers has a series of uh, private hydrants and a fire pump. At, a, at an industrial facility and it is contracted out annual test supervised by or observed by the fire department and absolutely. you're describing something very similar to that absolutely okay that's that's a sort of a smaller uh sunderland -ized version of what we're trying to accomplish yeah. here yeah got it um, because there's hydrants right now where we say well you can't hook onto that hydrant nobody knows the last time it's been open don't bother go right. over there and use right. that hydrant that's got further it. away yep so if they don't function, they need to be identified as being out of service. Mm -hmm. So a fire department from another town, another county, another state. Sure. Municipal aid, right. Comes in right. and you have something similar to a Holyoke scenario. Right. Just because they, know, they didn't know they can't use that hydrant, but they could use that one. Got it. And you can't go on private property and bag hydrants because that brings in a whole other, a whole other animal. Challenge. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. 
Um, going down the list next, we've got uh, smoke carbon monoxide detector inspection uh, per building. Those fees have, just go down to what I've got here. Those fees haven't changed per se, mm -hmm. um, but what we want to do is we just want to have the, um, we want to have the, um, uh, have it stipulated that it's per building. Mm -hmm. So you don't have five or six or eight buildings that are uh, getting sold and you spend five hours or six hours there right. and it doesn't cover your costs. So you're, you're going away from street address to buildings. Smart. Okay. Correct. Thank you. And then uh, the reinspect no show um, line there, just stipulating it's in addition to the original fee. Right. So they still have to pay the original fee and then the reinspect and, the, and no show. Yep. They can't show up, you fail, and then argue that, well, I failed, this is a reinspect, so I'm going to pay half yeah. of the fee. Because yeah. believe it or not, that's happened. <laughs> um, a, new, um, a new test that we're. Or, the inspection that we're doing, and this has come in um, along with the building inspector, is uh, annual life safety codes, 304s. Uh, not something that we had done previously. Uh, in speaking with the new building inspector, that's something that he wants to do in concert with the fire department. Okay. And that would be in, um, again, broken out residential occupancies, six plus units, that's really the only place that you do such a thing. And there's a $50 per building fee for that. That's not nearly as involved as the smoke detector inspections when something is, is transferred mm -hmm. or the initial sprinkler inspections. That's walking around visual. Do they have uh, anything flammable stored in the building? Do they have anything new, such as gas-fired hot water heaters, whereas before it was only electric, so they didn't have to have carbon monoxide detectors in the building? Um, it's more of a cursory walk around on an annual basis. Okay. The, the others, uh, annual liquor license inspections, that's been increased from 35 to 50. Uh, most other towns are getting anywhere from 50 to 100. Mm -hmm for those tests, so we're not interested in making uh, this the most expensive environment to, okay. to do business, but we want to be equal with our peers. Um, fire protection system shutdown, uh, $50 for that, and then uh, the fee schedule if there needs to be a standby. Per the, uh, the state law and state code, if you've got a hardwired system for alarms, sprinklers, what have you, the fire department must be notified whenever that's offline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something without a formal way to say, okay, we're going to do this. You need to be on notice, maybe have people there. Um, this gives us that ability to say, okay, just let us know. We'll have somebody there if you need it. Otherwise, not necessary. Hot work permits are something that has also been a new thing with the fire marshal's office. And there have been a couple of instances in surrounding towns where hot work, as they call it, has, called, uh, has started fires. And there is a, there's a permit process. There is a pretty rigorous approval process for persons at a place of business that are doing hot work. What's like so? Just so folks know, like what what what's hot work? You know, hot like, work like would be cutting, welding, yep. grinding, any sort of activity that would produce sparks or heat sufficient to start a fire. Kind of like what happened at Notre Dame over there. Precisely, was doing hot work and yep. precisely. And there now there is language in the code that stipulates if by virtue of you holding a license for a particular trade, you're going to do hot work. Like if you're a you know, if you're a certified licensed welder yep. or perhaps a plumber that uses a torch as for soldering as part of their, their trade, you don't have to get a hot work permit. Okay. But if you've got a business and people are occasionally conducting hot work as part of maintenance, then that is something that annually you would have to file with the fire department. Okay. And we're going to start enforcing that. And most of the businesses in town that conduct that sort of operation, 
uh, actually contacted me and said, what do we have to do? Yeah. Because their yeah. insurers are They're asking about that. showing them, okay, this is clearly what you do. Show us your hot work permits. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. So again, uh, relatively reasonable for that. Um, and then I also broke out fire inspections for liquor license for hood cleaning or fire suppression systems. Those need to be um, the hoods, um, exhaust hoods over grease producing appliances have to be cleaned at least annually, mm -hmm. sometimes quarterly. Mm -hmm. And the party that does the cleaning usually stipulates when that needs to be done. Uh, and also all of those, for the most part, all of those devices have a fire suppression system inside. Yeah. So if the device that they're exhausting starts on fire, you get that white puff and it puts everything out for standing close by you look like a snowman yeah. and walk away. Um, that's really, I'm just breaking out some of the inspections that we already did on an annual basis for liquor licenses and so forth and raising those fees from 35 to 50 and um, having a $50 fee be per floor of each building. Um, there's a couple of buildings in town that are a couple of floors in size, and it takes longer to accomplish that. Sure. So we've, uh, we've increased that. And then last but not least, the last page, um, fire drill requests and fire extinguisher training requests. Uh, not going to be charging the elementary school for the required fire drills, but we have had calls from businesses recently asking for fire extinguisher trainings and asking for fire drills. Can you come and help us? And we're happy to do that, but there's something that um, I don't have a mechanism to recover the cost from that. Uh, right. If we pay somebody to go and they get hurt, they're clearly on the clock for the town. So it's, it's important that we put that into some framework of you're conducting a, a service on behalf of the fire department, being compensated for it. And um, that will also let us have a little bit of money to come back, recharge a fire extinguisher, or um, have some literature, what have you. And that's a relatively modest cost for, uh, for something that would probably help a business get, uh, get some relief on their insurance rates. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, Board of Health and Court Ordered Inspections. That's something that uh, I put in as an hourly fee because there's the process of going out, but also right. the process of writing up the report. And that's something that is typically uh, going to be sent to the judge. And while um, we've been very thorough in the past, if somebody's very um, interested in fighting that sort of thing, it could get involved and become, um, could be a legal issue that the department gets drawn into, the individuals that were there. Uh, recovering this cost is probably going to be about as easy as the Board of Health recovering their fees. Uh, but I'd like, and we're not going to stop doing this until we get a check in the mail. Yeah. Uh, it's not one of those details, but I'd like to have it in writing that if we are in a position to recover costs, then we can do that and, bit. and offset some of the costs that we incur for doing that. And at the bottom, I didn't change this at all, but I'll mention it here, that you know that this is a, a schedule of, uh, quite frankly, business activities that the department would do. This is not necessarily related to you burn bread in your house and all your smoke detectors are going off and the fire department gets called. Right. Not going to be charging folks for that. Right. Your dog falls through the ice and needs to be rescued. We're not going to charge you for that. Um, that's not what the intention is. These are strictly uh, business operations and we're not, uh, we're not going to penalize anybody for having a true emergency. Just negligence. And, because you're starting to see that a lot because this sort of falls under the example of people you know, who are saying, wow, we should be running the government like a business. Well, here you go. This is making it more professional and more business-like, and there's a cost, and we have to recoup the cost. And, no? and there are some... Safety. And, yeah, and there, are some, there are some things in here, burning without a permit. Yep. Um, I can't think of any place that on the first offense somebody would, would charge you right. for a fire response for burning without a permit, but there are people that will burn garbage, they'll burn brush in the middle of summer or seasons where it's illegal to. Yeah. Um, and 
sometimes the only way that we can dissuade people from doing that is by saying, look, this is against the law, and in town we have, uh, we have agreed that we can charge you for this response. Yeah, that makes sense. That's typically after you explain it to people that way, they'll, uh, they'll come around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially like in the summer when it's like peak dry season, it's windy, and somebody decides to go and burn brush. And it, and it becomes an issue because I have people calling me throughout the year asking, can we burn brush? And ultimately, I could tell you yes, but if the district fire warden for the Department of Conservation and Recreation <coughs> lives across the river, comes by, he can still find you. So just because I said you could, if yeah. I happen to, sure. it doesn't relieve you from that somebody else coming in and being able to hand you a much bigger fine. Mm. Um, so it, it helps to be able to explain to people that these are real and we've got some, uh, we've got some fees on the books if you continue to ignore what's going on. Makes sense. Yeah. David, any questions? Yeah, yeah it's pretty, pretty good dry. Your job walking through it. So. so I will ask two questions. First is, how does the cash flow? This doesn't go to an enterprise fund, does it? Or does it go to the general fund? This would go with the, uh, the fee breakdown schedule that we have for the fire inspector position. Mm -hmm. So 90% so would go to that individual and 10% would come back to the town. Got it. So we're actually uh, modeling it after a fee for service. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Uh, second question. Of these fees, are there policies that back them up in the department so that we avoid uh, potential litigation in the future? So we can say there's a fee, but then uh, a customer might ask, what's the deliverable? What is it? What are, is there, we've had this in other departments, are there policies that back up saying, yes, we have to have Tick, 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 whether it's in concert with the building department or whether it's an annual fee, fee schedule with a list of businesses that need to be annual, annually visited. I want to make sure that the policies and the fees are lined up. Understood. From, for the majority of these, like for a 26 F and a half, you sell your house, you'd get a permit yep. that would say, okay, you, you paid, here's your permit. Yep. For pulling an oil tank, you'd get a permit sure. that would say this is gone. For a lot of the other a lot of the other activities, you would either get your certificate of occupancy right. or you would get a, a letter saying mm -hmm. this has been accomplished. So we don't have, for every single thing here, uh, uh, pyrotechnic detail, fire watch, we don't have necessarily a, um, a document that said, oh, we did a fire watch and thank you for your, your payment and here's what you got. So uh, hypothetical. I'm a movie company right now. I roll into town and say, listen, I want to launch a bunch of fireworks. Who do I talk to? They should know, and most of them do, yep. that you'd go to the fire department Got and it. you would get a permit yep. from the fire chief. Yep. And actually from the state, yep. the fire chief would be your first, uh, your first order of business. Mm -hmm. And again, that permit would come back to you Got from it. the state and you'd have cleared all your Got it. Your I'm just Take thinking, in, in general, as Steve, I'm talking just about alignment. I'd hate to. Of course. I'm going to make sure that their their practices and permits are together. Well, and they need to be, and it's it's a fair uh, it's a fair comment because as we decide to recoup costs for things, people yep. naturally say, "Well, what do I get?" Right. right. And there's there's a couple items in here where. There wouldn't necessarily be anything that you'd get per se, other than your liquor license renewed or yeah, you signed you, off, right? In compliance with the law. Yep. But now that um, uh, Tom Quinlan mm -hmm. is across the hall, he's giving us a much better idea of what he provides mm -hmm. and what some of the other towns provide. Yep. And that'll help us over the next year or so to put those things into place. Great. Great. I appreciate that. I just thought it made me think of one other question. Do we have like a link to any of this on the town website? Just to say, you know, for these things, you know, maybe it's go to your site, but. Absolutely, if you yeah. go into the town website under fire department yep. and go to the fire department website, at the top there's That's inspections and there. fees and it's there in okay. PDF, it's downstairs too. Great. And generally any time that we would be sending a bill to anybody that is not familiar with this, some of the business owners that aren't used to having these things come in, um, just attach the fee schedule with that. Okay. 
so they'd have it and they'd be aware of it. Subject change. Got a big red truck showing up soon? Uh, yeah. The last I heard, and I spoke to, actually last week I was on the phone with the dealer. Uh, now they're looking at about six weeks for completion mm -hmm. in South Dakota. Then it will have to go to Connecticut uh, to the dealer to get the last, those last mile items, the radio installed, and the different things. So, so it goes from South Dakota to Connecticut. They drill all the holes in it, run all the wires. We're not installing anything. That's the, the best thing to do is to have them poke all the holes right. and yep. them drive it. So it's looking like realistically probably about eight weeks yep. till it will be here. And um, we're still, at this point in time, if I think back, they are probably starting on the plumbing. The chassis is done. The exactly. cab is mostly done. Most of the compartments are built. Mm -hmm. So now they're working on uh, the plumbing from the pump to all the different outlets and inlets. They're working on how the uh, control panels can be laid out, mm -hmm. where everything's going to go, and then they've got to paint the uh, paint the kit, um, the body, yep. and add on all the lights. The wiring takes a while. Sure, um, yeah, I bet. Yeah. But we're in the home stretch. Cool. So, as a reminder to people, that's a bond issue, and uh, when we're in receipt of it, uh, there'll be a note, and you can look for it in your spring taxes. It's a debt exclusion. It will go away when the debt is paid off. That's important to bear in mind. Anything else, Chief? Not much else other than October's Fire Prevention Month. So Check your batteries. You know, check your batteries and the smoke detectors. Make sure they're all within date. Yep. And then also, uh, over the weekend, I received an email from the State Fire Marshal's office saying that um, online retailers have been selling smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors that have not passed a lot of the NFPA standards sure. that are yeah. required. So they may work, they may not work. Um, they're, they're easy to buy, they're right there, and they're probably a little bit less expensive than some of the name brands, but they haven't been tested by anybody to say that they will go off, they'll sound at this decibel, or they'll last this long. So if you're buying a smoke detector or carbon monoxide detector online, be sure of that. Also, be sure that um, uh, the seller is reputable because some of those devices have even been packaged saying that they meet the NFPA standard, hmm. but they have not been tested. So whoever's manufacturing them is copying everything right down to the packaging, yep. the nomenclature on the packaging, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not, um, they're not legit from what we can tell. Yeah, they're from a reputable source. Yeah, there's, there's a similar gray market challenges in distribution as well. Without a doubt. Exactly. Without a doubt. Okay. Thanks, Chief. I give you the closing comment. Anything else? Thank you for your support and be safe. Appreciate that. Uh, Dave, is there a motion to accept the fee schedule as presented? Uh, motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two to zero, please. That was easy. Keep your stick on the ice. Keep your stick on the ice. I like it. All right, we have like a minute behind schedule for the water district and they are sticklers. So come on up. How are you guys doing tonight? Good, good, thank you. David, how are you? Hey, Fred. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Fred. Scott, Dave. Fred. Nice to see you, Fred. <coughs> so uh, we have gone through the building surveys with uh, Roy Brown and a team of engineers and architects and mechanical engineers and they've given us a whole uh, long-term schedule maintenance plan outside of the only building that needs the most work is the public safety complex all the time since it's been built forever and ever and ever. I wish I yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we wish you left right now. Um, and the question... It was uh, building in the, in the municipal building in town, yeah, right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, exactly. No it, oversight? or Yeah, it's a good question. There was, there was a very energetic committee who was all about public safety. Not necessarily about, you know, other things. So that said, the interesting part about that is uh, this building, uh, the graves, the uh, old fire station, the library, are all have the need for long-term maintenance, right? That stuff doesn't change. The question about the uh, old fire station is we have, a, we have a standing lease, and you guys are great, 
the question is if the town decides to get rid of that building, do you have any interest in buying it? And you can noodle on it and bring it to your next meeting. But that, mm -hmm. that's what we're here to talk about. Mm -hmm. At some point, there's a lot of blacktop that's there. There is a fair amount of the structural work to keep some header work involved, header work for uh, space because the spans, it was modified before, a little bit of roof work. But from a use perspective, at our lease rate uh, with the water district, the question becomes, does it serve a purpose for a municipal function? And I don't know. So that's what we wanted to open up the discussion tonight with you guys. Again, you have to take it back to your body to talk about, but at some point, there's a quarter of a million dollars worth of blacktop and grading. There's a bunch of stuff that's associated with it. And do we really, as a town, need it? Mm -hmm. So. But are, are you sure, um, like that blacktop, mm -hmm. thing, what they're talking about, because there's a, there's a public way there. There is a public way. This, I agree and then with that completely. There's a good portion of the parking is probably for the Blue Heron. That's also correct. Yep. Yeah. Where's, well the, where's the blacktop to the building, municipal building? I don't have the report, but we'd be happy to share it with you. There's no, 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 no doubt that there's some stuff that's got to be done there. So. Okay. Yeah. Does the board have a, a price in mind? Uh, I don't know. No, a price in mind for selling. At this point, no. This is the first time we've actually talked about it in a, in, a, in a public setting, and frankly, we haven't talked about it in private. It just came out of the Capital Planning Committee, mm -hmm. and the Capital Planning Committee is like, well, hell, you know, do we need it? And do you declare it surplus, or do you sell it for a dollar? I mean, what do you do with it? The first line of questioning was to a, a, approach the district and say, do you have a need for it? Are you interested in it, you know, in the long term? And we wanted to talk to you first because we, we continue to work well together. Mm -hmm. So, sure. yeah, um, and we work well because George is using part of it. Yeah, as well. exactly. I the crowd, yep. So we, we share space. Uh, what we have for yep. space. Yep. So food for thought, you know, as, as we go to your next couple of meetings, we have, I'm sure the assessors have it on a card. I'm sure it has an assessed value, you know, the, the town in and of itself, um, I'm sure a disposition of property over $5,000 has got to go to town meeting anyway. So it's not going to be Sherry or her replacement getting disposition. It won't be the board doing it. It'll have to be the, the town meeting vote. So mm -hmm. that said, something to consider. Do you have an idea of what the lot is that the building is on? The uh, we size can, lot? Yeah, we can get that. We have to retain uh, right away for uh, Warner Drive, obviously. We have to retain why, uh, right away to the sewer, right? We have to get to the lift station. We have to get to the lift station. But it's kind of a little island set inside there. And the fire station, the old fire station, sits inside that, that small island. So. Yeah. We can so get that. In. We take that on as homework, Fred, and and, right. and get back to you with what that is. Yeah, and like parking too. Yep. Was, yep. Uh, whether it's Blue Heron right. ownership or I don't know, Delta has some ownership in that. Delta area. doesn't have any. Actually, Blue Heron has a first right of refusal, but we're going to reach out to them as well. Okay. So anyway, first line of discussion. Right before we capital planning starts going to town meeting to what for whatever values to continue to work the building into the next hundred years, which is what this this capital planning committee exercise was about. What are the assets and how do we keep them going for decades to come? One of the first ones that came up was, oh, do you really need the old fire station? Yeah, it's a great question. We had this discussion. It took almost a decade. To, do you really need the old town hall? Like and we just we just kept putting enough money in year after year to keep nature from taking it back, mm -hmm. and then it made it to the market, and you've got a successful story over there. So we wanted to sp speak with you as well. Yeah, when we did first lease it, we put on a roof yep. there that yep. needed to be repaired. So okay. We spent mm, this, yeah real money yeah. yeah money to replace that yep. roof. Um, so like the upstairs meeting room, if you're familiar with that. Yep building um that's mostly for storage now there's some voting booths in there mm -hmm. um and then we have a few items i think there were some items left from the fire department that are still there still there mm -hmm. um there's trophies <laughs> <laughs> fire department trophies love it the same we never really moved out completely yeah. well 
So the, the disposition of the station is going to become an active discussion going up to town meeting. And again, we wanted to speak with you guys sure. absolutely first as the current as the current leasers of it. Okay. Yeah. And our capital planning committee meeting starts tomorrow. We're not going to take any action on any of this. We got other things we've got to worry about and work toward. But I would do want to have it out there as a as a point of discussion that well, what do we end up doing with it? If someone wants it and we don't need it, fine. Let's talk about selling it and put that in front of town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Very good. We'll Beyond go that, ahead. how's the water district doing? Very well. Great. We're still uh, pumping water. <laughs> that's, <good. laughs> that's, that, that's the goal, right? When all said and done, that's the goal. Yeah. Keep, Steve was just singing your praises about the hydrants. So. Well, yeah. I, um, I think firefighting-wise, we're good for much, water. Much better than the surrounding towns, just yeah. by virtue of the pressure. And right. Very reliable. Good. Good. Glad for that. Very good, gentlemen. Thanks so much. Yes. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Have a great good night. night. Okay. Uh, minutes of 9.23 and 9.30. Not 9.30 already. Steve. No. Thanks uh, so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Do you want a separate one for each? Uh, let's just see. 9.23 is pretty straightforward. Mass DOT, that really wasn't us, but... Yeah. yeah, we can have one for both, Dave. Okay. Uh, I make a motion on the minutes for 923 and the nine, uh, 930 minutes. Okay. Um, I'll second for discussion. We have a one-day liquor license request on 930. That's for a specific date. Is there an agenda item tonight for a concurrent yep, date? there are more. Got it. Thank you. Uh, no more discussion. All those in favor of the minutes of 923 and 930? Aye. Aye, right, two to zero, please. Okay, uh, select board updates. Dave, anything you wanna weigh in on? Yeah, we have our personnel committee meeting on the 15th where we're gonna, um, like we talked about in our last meeting, so we'll do an initial review, use that yep. board as the uh, initial vetting of the um, candidates for their applications. Harry's job. Yep. Okay. Resumes, applications. Yep. Um, and if we don't find anybody we like, of course, you'll have to stay. You know. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that die's been cast. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but, I'm uh, working with a Princeton <laughs> angle. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, we also have. I have a meeting <coughs> this week for the um, Union Thirty Eight contract. So the mediation is continuing. Yes, they continue. Great. So, I think that's all I have right now, though. Okay. <clears throat> so, there's a capital planning committee meeting tomorrow, uh, and that is going to be ex continuing on with the, our work on the Roy Brown, or the building survey plan. And that um, is the framework for getting feedback from department heads as they go about their budgeting process. So we have expense, obviously, operating budgets, but this capital piece is uh, built, the capital planning committee is looking at what elements in the 10, 20, and 30 year block we should begin the budgeting process for. Yeah, so the and planning out long term. Right, bring yeah. that, bring those pieces forward to the board through the department heads. It's important to bear in mind, capital planning is not uh, usurping in any way a department head's input. It's a matter of taking that engineering work that's been done, architectural work that's been done, and integrating it into what department heads are, are going to be looking for. Uh, and that's tomorrow night. Uh, we have I guess that's it for the Board of Selectmen's updates for me. I think it's important to note too that we're doing that kind of long-term planning rather than just kind of coming yeah, along. That's, it's that's important. The, it's the slow, mm -hmm. silent governance that's not politics that yep. keeps the tax rate stable over time and keeps the assets of the towns and the community in more than functional service. Exactly. It's that kind of stuff that's the ugly, mm -hmm. slow, quiet, 
drip. That's not not hyperventilating in the news cycle and <laughs> right. nonsense. Anyway, it's capital planning. Um, Sherry, this is like one of your second to last meetings, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. The updates are going to say in summation. Um, no. no good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I've had several meetings over the last couple of weeks um, to wrap up different projects and to, uh, to file reports and make sure everything um, is going on accordingly. Um, and so with that, uh, Cindy Bennett will be doing the minutes um, after I leave. And if you would like her to attend um, your meetings, she's available to do that as well, yeah. or she can transcribe from the videos or she can keep watch us at home. She can keep us honest. Right. Okay. <laughs> Um, I have a meeting tomorrow with DOER representatives, Eversource, and uh, JK Energy, yep. the vendors for the Green Communities Project. So that will be um, launching, and that's pretty turnkey. They'll be in and out in, in no time, and that project will well, be finished. Met with and, the library trustees already. Right. Yep. Um, nice. So that's um, moving forward. Uh, we filed the next round of... Um, Complete Streets Street. Projects, nice. you'll hear in January or February. We've wrapped up the reports, finished the, um, and submitted the final reimbursement for the first Complete Streets grant. Uh, the um, Riverside Park project is done and all reimbursements are in. The only piece left for that is the um, uh, conservation restriction. Mm-hmm. And Sarah will be um, heading that up with Elaine Peteroy from the okay. Franklin Land Trust. Okay. Um, so we have representatives from the town that are um, ready, willing, and able to kind of pitch in um, during the transition mm-hmm. and who are very familiar and knowledgeable about the project. So, so I think is, we're in good shape. Is the Land Trust going to hold the restriction? Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. I noticed that award for the... Um, oh, and Starbos, the yes, the town got another um, award for the from <clears throat> Starbos nice. for the yeah Handicapped Accessible Park. Nice Good. Thing. So uh, piggybacking on some of those completed elements, people who drive in and around town will notice that uh, line striping has been done on South Main Street. Yep. Yes. And mm-hmm. it kind of gives con- context to what the street layout... It does help. Yeah. Because I've had to answer innumerable questions yeah. about, well, what are those lines on there? Right, right. Yeah. So I think that, that that's helpful. Um, and, and I want to just uh, follow up one more time, uh, with thanking Sherry for the, the work that she's done in her tenure here. Wrap, wrapping up the projects, you know, sounds really simple in a, in a single sentence. Mm-hmm. And it can be a heavy lift getting other agencies corresponding uh, partners, you know, getting the ribbon tied on a project or multiple projects is not always the easiest thing in the world. Very and true. Uh, I think that uh, it's a display of Sherry's professionalism again to simply make sure that we're like done. That part's done. You don't have to worry about it. And uh, thank you for that. That's a huge deal. Really appreciate it. Did we explain just what those markings were to the last meeting? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think I thought we did, but I just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. It's important just to bear in mind that's a that's a mass mass dot, and actually, it's more than a mass. I wish Gary Breer were here right now. Gary, if you're watching, yes. Um, <laughs> you know that that is a reminder to drivers as well as cyclists that it is a shared space. Yes. And that the breakdown lane or the bar, far right marker is exactly that. That's not exactly a bike lane. It's a shared space. It's a shared space. space. Yeah. Because I've, I've heard complaints from both bikers and motorists about Good. The opposing parties. That and means that means it's working. Right. And, and you know, <laughs> I'll just say that, you know, people need to pay attention and right. share the road. Right. And, you know, when you see a bike, pull over. And if you're on the other lane, try to pull over a little bit when somebody's pulling over to yeah. avoid a biker. Yeah. And also, if you're a biker, don't like if you've got three people on your bike, don't right. ride three, three abreast ride. and be obnoxious. Right. Because I've seen both drivers and bicyclists be obnoxious. Yeah. And, you know. They would call it exercising their rights. If you're on the other side, yeah. you call it obnoxious. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So just be mindful Mainly of it's each obnoxious. Other and share right. the space. Yep. Exactly right. Well played. Okay. So we've got next up uh, David uh, under new business. Uh, Wisman, Mike's Maze, additional for 
10, 18, 10, 25, and 11, 1. This is beer tasting maze. So if you want to drink beer and walk around the maze at night, <laughs> bring a headlamp. These are uh, one with a, each of these with a respective rain date being the following day. So 10, 11 with a rain date of 10, 12. These are from 6 to 9 p.m. 10, 18 with a rain date of 10, 19. Same time, 6 to 9 p.m. And then 10.25 with a rain date of 10.26, again, 6 to 9 p.m. These are malt beverage only on-site uh, consumption, and it is for profit. We have gotten our correspondence from Public Safety, and we've got their insurance bits. Uh, this is uh, coming to becoming an annual, uh, and these three applications are all in place with... Uh, fees covered. Anything we should be worried about? Children mm -hmm. of the corn joke Children coming? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I was actually at one of them and people seem to be pretty well behaved and everything. So, but, you know, except for the poor people that tend to get lost sometimes in there. Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. it is dark. It you know, is dark. So. Yeah. But, I, um, it's interesting. And, and I wish them, uh, I heard these other issues. So they manage, um, it's a business they manage to uh, keep everybody safe and smart and yep. uh, you know, <coughs> keep the corn. Because you know, without, without the corn, there's no maize. It's true. Right? It's quite an amazing experience. Absolutely so. right. Well played. Okay. Sorry. Any discussion about the application? If not, is there a motion to approve the three dates as requested as well as their rain dates? Uh, motion. We have a motion made and seconded. And, I'm sorry. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Two. Aye. Aye. Two to zero, please. Okay, so there's the Apologies permit. for getting corny early. Yeah. <laughs> it's on its way. Oh. Okay. <coughs> Esther, how are we doing on time? Yeah. All right. Next up for us, uh, we are going to exit open session to go to executive session now we're only going to executive session for one task and that is to approve minutes of prior executive sessions because the town administrator position is being turned over so we want to make sure that anything that sherry has participated in or has uh uh, written as, as uh, the minutes taker for us uh, is accurate and closed out. We will only take that action. We will only return to open session to adjourn. So again, only looking at minutes. If they're good to go, then we're going to be able to release them. If they're not good to go, then we won't. I think we only have one open issue right now. Um, and, and frankly, I like that because Sunderland stays out of the paper unless it's good stuff, yep. right? That's what we're here to do because the Sunderland Board of Awesome delivers the goods. <laughs> that said, uh, motion to move into executive session under Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21, and this is to comply with or act under the authority of any general law or special law or federal grant aid requirement. It's the lamest of the executive sessions, but it is allows us to go in to approve minutes or not approve minutes. This will be a roll call vote. Aye. Aye. And again, we will be uh, two to zero, please. And we will only be returning to open session to adjourn.